I, I, I don't get asked many questions, but but the most frequent one would be how you know it would would be a colleague saying, "I've got a patient. I want to start levodopa. How do you you know what's your starting dose and how how do you start that?" So I thought that would be the the, the topic for my um, uh, for, for this today. So a, a few things to say about about levodopa. Um, it, look, it, it remains uh, it remains the most efficacious drug that we've got in 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 terms of treating the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Um, there are, um, depending on when you're trained, you might have cer certain views or uh, attitudes towards the optimal time of starting drug treatment. But really, um, we, we start drug treatment in Parkinson's disease when the symptoms are sufficient to interfere with activities of daily living, impact on quality of life or, or, or affect their ability to perform a job. Now, if if the symptoms are, are milder than that, then, 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 then you might not need to treat. The truth in clinical practice, though, partly because of waiting lists and, and, and other factors. By the time they get to see us in the movement disorder clinic, um, the, the, you know, it, it's time to treat them uh, in, in most cases. So, so we're starting in, in medication in, in the majority of cases. Uh, there, there is a lot of levodopaphobia or levophobia, uh, and 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 there, there was a, there's a uh, there had been a, a view that has been hard to shift that levodopa itself was neurotoxic and contributed to uh, development of uh, of motor complications. But we recognise that that's that's really not that, that that's really not the case, and and the the motor fluctuations that we see initially the wearing off, often followed by the dyskinesia, is um, is related to the progression of the underlying disease rather than the med than the medication itself. That said, we do try and use the lowest possible dose of levodopa um, um, uh, that, that, that we can to achieve symptomatic relief, particularly in younger patients who are going to be on the drug for some time. There, um, levodopa is more efficacious than dopamine agonists or MAOB inhibitors, but we do think about those drugs when the patient is particularly young, um, if the motor symptoms are particularly mild. Um, there, there is a, in, a, in an emerging literature that in um, patients who've got genetic causes of Parkinson's disease, for example, in a Parkin mutation, um, that uh, avoiding levodopa to avoid early dyskinesias is important. And there are still uh, quite a lot of patients who are, who are keen to avoid it for as long as, as, as possible. And that's when we tend to use the, the, the other drugs. Levodopa is, is an interesting drug. The half-life of the drug is, is 90 minutes, but that only comes into play when uh, you're experiencing the, the 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 motor fluctuations. So actually, the the clinical so the clinical half life of the drug is 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 only a, a, an issue when when as the disease progresses. So so in in early disease, you you have a kind of long duration of action of levodopa. And I can't really think of another example where the pharmacokinetics of a drug alters um, in relation to a, a, a disease progression. Now, when levodopa was first uh, discovered, as 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 uh, when they discovered that dopamine was lacking in in uh, the Parkinsonian brain, and 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 tried to use levodopa, they were hamstrung by um uh, by the peripheral side effects, that the the nausea that's caused. You don't have a blood brain barrier at the area of postrema, and so you give people levodopa on its own, and and they'll vomit profusely. Add, add a dopa decarboxylase inhibitor, uh, um, and then and, and then you, you prevent the peripheral metabolism of levodopa, and and can at 80, 90 percent of it will cross the blood-brain barrier and have the intended effects. Um, um, one, my one interesting fact that that, that 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 you may remember from from today will be that um, uh, the etymology of the word cinemet. Because cinnamet is a combination of levodopa and carbidopa as your dopa decarboxylase inhibitor. Um, that, so cinemet literally means cine without an emet, without emesis, so without vomiting. Uh, and and that, that's how that drug got its name. Um, control release and slow release preparations are, are, are a bit rubbish, if I'm honest. The, uh, the absorption is, is not predictable. Um, it can be useful to use overnight when, uh, uh, when the kind of slow release is, is, is useful. But, but overall, uh, we tend to avoid these uh, except overnight. Um, and it's, it's worthwhile remembering that sudden uh, withdrawal of levodopa can can um, can give rise to um, a, a kind of Parkinsonism, hyperphrexia, or um, a neuroleptic malignant type presentation. Remember that cinemet and madapart are equivalent in in terms of their their uh, their efficacy. So so whenever you're prescribing it. Pick one and stick with it. So in my case, my first line is Cinemet, um, and and if someone doesn't tolerate it, then then sometimes uh, I'll use Madapar as an alternative. Um, I have to warn the patient that they're going to experience dopaminergic side effects, nausea, lightheadedness, in older patients, confusion possibly. Um, 
the truth is, it, when, when when I started doing clinics with Donald Grossett, we we always co-prescribed a, a supply of domperidone tablets, but concerns about um, um, uh, about QT interval prolongation mean that we don't routinely do that. And that's probably much better medicine because the side effects, the dopaminergic side effects in, in uh, with, with prescription of levodopa are front loaded. So a lot of patients will not experience the, uh, the, um, um, the, 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 the nausea for, for particularly long. You have to tell the patient that the timings of the medication are important and, and particularly that proteinaceous you know, meat meals with high protein content can interfere with drug absorption and advise them to take the drugs before eating. Um, so, my, so finally, to answer my own question, my written instruction to the GP is as follows. So start, please start Cinemet and then in brackets, co dopa 50 slash 12.5 milligrams, because that's a long form of, 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 of just to make sure that they're prescribing the right preparation as follows. Week one, one tablet once daily, and it's usually in the morning. Week two, one tablet twice daily, and week three and beyond, because sometimes it will be stopped um, 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 as uh, you know in, in error after three weeks, um, one tablet three times daily. I will then assess from there, and obviously there's plenty of, uh, you know, some patients, uh, uh, with, with that, that leaves the patient um, on 150 milligrams daily of levodopa, and that might be sufficient for um, uh, for, for some people to get a mild motor benefit and um, and, and you don't therefore need to, to increase from there. Um, you know, and that's all I have to say.